Okay, so uh, who can tell me uh, what is big data? So that is the first question. Who can tell me what do you mean by big data? Have you heard this term anywhere before? The definition of big data, if you Google, you will get first thing. You can just go to Google and say, what is big data? You will get tons of articles, PDFs and presentations. That is not what I'm going to teach you. Let's take a practical use case, right? Let's take a practical use case and try to understand uh, how big data actually makes sense, right? First of all, big data is related to IT. So you need some level of IT knowledge to be fair, right? This has something to do with IT. Uh, I will share my personal experience, okay? So when I started working in 2007, 2008 and all, okay, I was working uh, with a company in Bangalore and we had uh, created an application, a sales application. So basically what we'll do, if you install this application, there was a retail company, uh, the customers will input all their sales data in that, you know, so they will say that today this much quantity item sold, you know, sold and sold and sold. And this application will capture all the data, okay, and store it. Now that was a very simple world. We did not have uh, mobile phones, we did not have Facebook, WhatsApp, nothing was there, 2005, right? And we were using an RDBMS system to store this. You know what is an RDBMS? So RDBMS is what we were using to traditionally store the data, right? And what is an RDBMS system? It has a row column format, you have a table, you insert the data. Now, if somebody is teaching you RDBMS, they will say that, well, RDBMS is great, it can store everything, you know, that's all fine, but unless your start, uh, data starts increasing, right? So originally, RDBMS can store everything. I don't have any, I, I'm, I'm not against RDBMS or something. Even for transactional management, we use RDBMS. There is no doubt about it. MySQL, Oracle, we were using MySQL actually. So whatever the customer is inserting, this MySQL will capture it. End of the year, you do some processing, you will understand how many items were sold. Everybody is happy, happy. This is what was happening in 2005. Fast forward to 2011, I am working with ICICI Bank. ICICI Bank want to migrate to big data platform. So what is the problem with ICICI Bank, right? So that is the question. Why ICICI Bank want to go to big data, right? Now, this example will also help you to understand the IT world, right? So for people who are not coming from the IT background, they might need to understand how things are working, right? So we, we went to ICICI Bank, we spoke with them, we said, hey, what, what do you want? They said, you know what, we are facing a lot of problems. We want to go to big data. We want to go to Hadoop. We'll see what is Hadoop later. So we asked, what is a big deal? What is your problem? So there were a lot of problems which they were facing. One of the problem is that if you look at this RDBMS system, right? Your typical RDBMS system. What is RDBMS systems doing? They will store the data in the form of a table, right? Now, if your table size is very, very small, it's not a big deal. Even if you look at uh, MySQL uh, or if you go to enterprise scale Oracle and all, you know, they can store gigabytes and sometimes up to terabytes of data. But as the size becomes big, so let's say I ask you, okay, you, uh, you have to store the data in Oracle. The data is keep on increasing every week you are not ready to migrate anywhere. Oracle, if you talk only about Oracle, they have storage separate and DBMS engine separate. In Oracle, what I can do, I can purchase Oracle and I can add storage boxes, as many as I want. You know, so these boxes will be in the network. So my database engine will be connecting to them and storing the data, whatever data I'm giving. So you can argue saying that I can increase the storage capacity and then Oracle can store as much data as you want. There is no doubt about it, right? But there is also a limitation for the storage, one problem. Second problem is that as this box increases, the storage in Oracle increases, you have to divide your data. So you are selling iPhone, let's say you're working with Apple, right? So one of the example is that if you are creating tables to store iPhone data, typically if you look at the schema and all, what we will do is that, there will be one table, okay? There will be one table wherein you will be having properties like, uh, you know, how many uh, items were purchased, at what rate they were purchased, how, how many people bought, so on and so forth. So this will be your items table. So in the items table, you will have all the data related to the iPhones you were selling, right? You will also have another table where there will be the user data. You will also have the user data. You know what is normalization? 
in rdbms systems in order to avoid duplication of data what we do is that we normalize the data we always keep the data in different different tables so if i want to get both the data from this i have to do something called a join query i i fire a join query and all the data from here will come and join and produce me the output this is good if you are having small amount of data what if you have terabytes of data here and here my join query will fail right or the join query has to wait now another point that people say is that if your rdbms is becoming bigger and bigger why don't you partition your data that is possible i can have like four boxes my one table okay if this is my table right it can be logically partitioned and kept on four machines if it is becoming bigger and bigger okay this is possible there is something called logical partitioning look at the iphone data i can say all the data where people from india are buying the iphone go to this machine that's called logical partitioning based on the country column so here i have all the india data where people are buying iphone here i have the us data where people are buying the iphone but the problem is here i'll have the burma data also india data will be let's say 2 terabyte china data will be 3 terabyte this will be kbs actually because in burma i don't think a lot of people are actually buying iphone probably right exactly so the problem is that if a table is becoming so big okay i can cluster it i can take four machines in my rdbms or data warehousing architecture and i can say partition the data because if a table is so big if i fire a query the query will take a lot of time so what i do i say that okay don't store the full table divide the table table or partition the table to partition i will say that you have to use some logic for partitioning i cannot physically divide the data that's not possible in rdbms i cannot say that take a table and cut it into four doesn't work so i have to logically partition so i have to say that there is a country column how many countries are there in the world maximum 155 right i'm not much of a geography person but i think somewhere around 155 right or at least people who buy iphone 155 countries are there so i will say take the country column so everybody who is buying an iphone will have a country column so based on the country column it will partition your data right now i have four boxes this box has india data us data burma data and something data again same story if you are running the join query this box has to process all the india data for join query this box will complete very fast this guy has to wait so again you are so the problem is that traditionally people were using rdbms systems and data warehouses to store the data now what is the drawback one of the drawback is that as the size of the data increases your processing will become very very slow why don't you denormalize the data why don't you denormalize the data for example all the transaction data user data everything i'll keep in one table is that possible i can't do so that is the reason they don't provide the denormalize solutions if you look at rdbms systems they will always say normalize your data so that it will be represented in different different tables and whenever you need the answer you do a join and you get the result second drawback this is only structured data meaning anything which you can represent in row column i can dump here like an excel sheet data right can i dump images and audio files in this table yes or no can we store unstructured data in rdbms yes you can there is clob blob and all objects right but can it process unstructured data not possible so size of the data increases it cannot cope up with processing one of the problem right second problem is the schema meaning anything which you can represent in a row column format i can dump in an rdbms anything apart from that i have to figure out a solution so what is the actual solution if i have to store images and retrieve them in real time how does flipkart stores the data i was working with flipkart for some time flipkart has around 10 million products each product has 10 images that is 1 billion images so when you click on a iphone x picture on flipkart flipkart will say that come after 10 minutes or immediately display have you ever thought how it is happening how it is happening right so do you think they are dumping in an rdbms and picking it from there 1 billion images there is a whole arena of databases called no sql if you have heard about mongodb cassandra hspace neo4j voldemort these are all popular vendors of no sql database so no sql databases will help you to store and retrieve unstructured data at any speed you want 
So what Amazon, Amazon.com actually does, Amazon has something called DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database. So in DynamoDB, I don't have a row column. I have key value pairs. So what they do, the key will be the product name. Say you are clicking on iPhone X. iPhone X is the key. The value will be all the data you have. So the moment you click, boom, your page is there. So NoSQL databases are really faster. Also, it helps you to store and structure data. How are you booking a cab using Ola? If I try to get a cab using Ola, right? I open up Ola. How many customers Ola has? Millions in India. And all of them are booking at the same time, right? Do you think all your requests are taken by an RDBMS and searched in the table and give you a cab? Does it work? Can an RDBMS system handle 30 million, 40 million concurrent sessions on this amount of data calculating route? MongoDB, NoSQL database. Ola runs on MongoDB. I was working with Ola for one of their design problems actually. So I didn't design anything, but they told me that they are using MongoDB. So the second drawback of your RDBMS is scalability is there. Okay. Third is price. Price is a problem, right? I mean, obviously, if you calculate the cost, if you look at Oracle and all, they are very, very costly solutions. Traditionally, storing the data on an RDBMS and retrieving is not good for the modern day. In the modern day, what is happening is that every company want to collect and analyze the data. Be it banking industry, e-commerce industry, or any industry that you want, they want to collect and analyze the data. So to give you an example, if you visit Amazon.com or Flipkart.com, what is happening? They start tracking from which IP address you are uh, visiting the website, how long you are clicking on a page, which items you are adding to cart, which images you are clicking, which offers you are clicking. All this data is analyzed to understand how a customer will behave. That is how they do marketing, right? So the more you start visiting the e-commerce companies, you start seeing recommendations and all the more. The more you visit Amazon, they will start recommending products to you, asking you to buy. So they have to collect all this data. So when I was working with Flipkart, Flipkart said that they collect data from the apps that you're using, from the website that you're having, even from social media. Flipkart is very active in social media, like Facebook, Twitter, all these places, they are active. So if anybody tweets about Flipkart or visit their Facebook page, all this data is being collected. Now, this, though, so this is actually called a big data. So the technical definition of big data is this huge amount of data which you cannot process using your traditional methods that is called big data right so why that is of interest to us we are going to figure out how to store this data huge amount of data right and how to process this data when i say no sql databases are there it does not mean your rdbms is gone so many people ask this question okay rdbms is the only solution for transaction management so even if you're buying something from Flipkart, who will uh, uh, complete your transaction? Oracle probably, or any transactional system. For transactional management, and why is that? Because RDBMS systems are the only ones which can ensure the asset properties, right? If a transaction goes or not goes. You bought something from Flipkart, tomorrow Flipkart cannot come back to you and say that, I don't really think, I don't know whether the transaction happened or not. Probably you got the money. It's not possible, right? <laughs> then you will start complaining again, Flipkart, right? So Flipkart comes to you and say that, you know what, we are using Cassandra. As per Cassandra, your transaction is, we don't know, we'll come back to you in another one week. Is that possible? No. So transaction management, very good question, uh, is still handled by RDBM. Polyglot persistence. In the world of big data, there is a separate category of systems called NoSQL databases. And they are databases. So what is a database does? Real-time, uh, you know, queries, right? And in that area, we have MongoDB, Cassandra, HSpace, and these guys. Now, these guys are used in real-time if you want to fetch the data. Say, for example, you are opening an e-commerce website. Probably, it is given by a NoSQL database, right? or millions of people are booking flights through cleartrip.com and cleartrip has to identify you know how many people are booking in a particular route so that it can give a better offer this is probably done by reading real time data from a nosql system our area is not nosql 
NoSQL is a DB actually, it's a database. Our area is not uh, NoSQL. We will come to Hadoop, right? Now, so this is that technical term for uh, coexistence of uh, DBs and NoSQL and all. 